Welcome to We Wednesday. I'm Robert Bolden, Life Transformed, and this is our first time doing We Wednesday live on Instagram. We've been on Facebook, but for those of you who know me, I actually deactivated my personal Facebook account. I wasn't using it. It wasn't adding value to my life. So I'm like, ah, let's get rid of it. So now we're going to give a swing on Alana's Instagram page because she has a lot more followers than I do. So that's the strategy strategy behind that. But those of you who are new to We Wednesday, every Wednesday, I jump on here and I'll share some wisdom that I received during the week. And it's called We Wednesday because we are all in this together. And that's what we at Life Transform believe. If I have some aha moments or new wisdom, Dan does, Alana does, anybody in our community does, we're encouraged to share that because if I learn something new or got new wisdom, chances are it's going to have an impact on other people. So we shouldn't keep that stuff to ourselves. I'm going to read the devotional plan that we're doing. And I just think it's really good. Do you ever feel like you might have a dual personality? You can be sweeter than cotton candy to your pastor, your neighbor, and the woman in your prayer group. However, when confronted with your husband's messy waves or your wife's messy ways, your children's lack of discipline, or your mom or your mother's controlling interference you become a screaming shrew and absolutely no evidence of the fruits of that delicious holy spirit let me assure you that you do not have a dual personality you are simply a person with both a soul and a spirit your soul under the influence of the fallen human nature will try to chain you to your emotions and lead you away from the character of christ your spirit always tries to imitate the truth of the Bible, but will never force you to choose Christ over your disruptive emotions. Which do you want to be in control of your life, your soul or your spirit? Well, there's a question, right? And I'd never heard soul and spirit described quite this way. So I'm like, oh yeah, for sure, spirit. Sign me up for spirit. The spirit is the life principle bestowed upon man by God. It is the part of a person that is able to grasp eternal concepts and sacred principles. Your spirit, quite simply, is the aspect of your being on, on which, upon which the Spirit of God exerts its primary and life-changing influence. It is also the part of you that is assigned to guard your heart or your soul. Think about that. The Spirit is from God, and it's assigned to guard your heart or your soul, basically. And your soul is that emotional thing that just goes cray cray sometimes and you can't control it the soul is strikingly different from the spirit whereas the spirit is a higher and more honorable part of one's unseen makeup the soul is lower and often feeds on the empty calories of temporary issues and circumstances the bible often refers to the soul as the mind or heart when neglected your spirit will exist in a weakened and ineffective position your soul must be fed healthy nutrients in order to function at its optimum performance level. The things that you elect to ingest emotionally will determine how healthy your soul is when life becomes challenging. Remember that your spirit sounds exactly like the Word of God when it talks, and that your soul often expresses itself with a victim mentality and always demands its own way. The next time you're in a challenging situation, allow your spirit to arise and tell your soul to sit down. I just think that is just amazing, amazing wisdom. And, and, and the reason why it really helps me is, sure, I've had those times when my soul is speaking and it's not good. It's not good stuff that's coming out. And for me, once I have this awareness that, well, there's spirit and soul, and make sure to ingest into my heart, into my mind, the word of God and the love of Jesus and the peace of Jesus. The more I do that, the more in those challenging situations, the spirit is going to come out when I'm in one of those situations versus the soul coming out. And if I neglect the spirit, it's just going to wither away. So I have to continually be in the word. And I just find for me, the more I'm in the word, the, the better everything gets. The more wisdom I gain, the more peace, the more joy, all those things. So that is the wisdom for this week. For me, one of the things that stood out the most to me was the talk that um, 
the spirit will always sound like what scripture says. And so if we're listening to the Holy Spirit living inside of us as um, believers, then one of the things that we're going to recognize is, all right, God is speaking to us and God is consistent. He is unchanging. So the things that he's going to say are going to remain consistent with what he has said in scripture. If we're in a situation and we're trying to distinguish, all right, is this the terminology used here was soul versus spirit? Um, is this from God or not from God? The question goes, does this line up with scripture? And one of the best ways that we can use that as a barometer is to actually know scripture. And if we know scripture and we, Jesus says, my sheep know my voice. Um, if we recognize the voice of God, because we have been engaged with scripture, because we have been reading what God has to say inside the Bible, then we are going to be more prepared to listen to and be led by his Holy Spirit, to be self-controlled, to, to be patient, to um, demonstrate those fruit of the Spirit that sometimes um, we are all too lax on <laughs> display. <laughs> Boy, you reminded me of another aha moment during the course of this week for me, reading several different sources, but one source said knowledge is 90% untrue. And then also I read and learned knowledge of, of God or knowledge of the word is 100% true. And in the postmodern era, what we've done in this country in particular, where, where God's truth used to be truth, I mean, you, you look at all the old universities that have, you know, Bible verses on inscripted in the, in the uh, bricks and all this stuff. And well, then postmodern era, we started putting kind of God into a, well, it's just an opinion versus truth. So the knowledge of God is truth. And the Bible is truth. It is the ultimate truth. But the knowledge of this world 90 percent of it is false because you all know this you can you can learn something today and then a year from now you swear it's true a year from now there's new research the new evidence you're like oh well that wasn't true <laughs> that wasn't true but the bible you can always count on as being absolutely true april yeah. thanks for joining us absolutely coffee's not good for me coffee is good for me eggs are good for me eggs are good for yeah. me it changes all the time right the time. but what we want to see is we want to see that there's a constant stream of truth and that truth comes from the light of the lord yes amen and it's like a it's like a working i mean we've got a bible we got a handbook right there on how to live i mean go to proverbs and it'll tell you exactly how to live life i mean it's all all up in Proverbs. There it is. Any situation, family, everything. It's all in there. Proverbs 31 girl right here, baby. <laughs> 31. <laughs> so, April, did you hear about the, what we talked about with the spirit and the soul? Well, we have to realize, we're, what are you in a spirit of light or are you in the spirit of darkness? And so the, the people that I want to speak to today are those that are kind of on the edge with their faith. Like there is a belief in the lightness out there everybody there's a light out there and you can keep hoping and believing and knowing that it you see other people see it therefore it, it's possible it's possible to see that spirit april what you were saying about the dark and the light i mean i believe that this world that we're in is satan's world he he's he's ruling the world and we that are the light we are in the world but not of the world and we are called to go into the dark world and shine the light and be the light for others. So people don't necessarily, it isn't our words, it's, it's just our persona, who we are, how we are. That's the light. Go into that power. What I'm learning is God is doing the transformational work out there in the world. All we have to do is do our part. And we don't have to overthink, oh, should I say something or shouldn't I? Da, 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 da. You know, you go into all that whole rabbit hole. No, just be 
genuine you and share who you are and share how Jesus has impacted your life. And God will do the transforming work. That's not your job. It's not my job to do that work. God will do that. But it's when we as, as bearers of the light, if we keep our light hidden and we put a veil over it, that's why I wear this cross outside. One of the reasons I wear it is because I can look at it and say, oh, look, I'm representing God right now. So I got to be... I got to be doing that when I'm out and about. I was just going to say, so this is a devotion that Robert and I did. I think he told you that, that we're doing now. Um, but it kind of like blew both of our minds because neither of us had thought about the spirit. I mean, not the spirit, the soul in that way before. I've always thought of the soul as like kind of of along the same lines of the spirit but not really you know what i mean like your soul is like your peace and you're like all the goodness but that's not what it is at all and so i was thinking about this earlier and it kind of reminds me of like what we talk about you know with mindset through life transform is like consciousness and subconscious and all of that and so your soul is kind of like your conscious state almost so it's your mind and your heart your emotions your feelings your reactions all of that stuff. So like when I think about it in that way, it's, it really drives home the desire and the, the wanting more to just make sure that everything you're taking in mm -hmm. and your environment and your words and your reactions and all of those things, like how important that is to you. Like it's affecting your soul. So when you say it like that, I think it's just, really powerful you know it takes it to like a whole other level so it yeah oh my gosh yes and you reminded me right i think it was in that same study where they talked about you went to your point when you take things in to your soul what comes out, out of your soul are the words <laughs> so what you're taking in is what comes out so you're right we gotta guard what's coming in because that's it's just gonna come right back out again in terms of your words. Well, maybe even your facial expressions and maybe your oh, yeah. voice too. Yeah. Nonverbals, yeah, we talk about that a lot. Mm -hmm. So that was the big thing for me. I used to be a knowledge junkie. You notice I said used to be. I mean, I would be going after knowledge left and right all mm -hmm. over the place. Mm -hmm. But now with this new awareness that a lot of knowledge is, is not truth, I'm spending so much more time in the word now and ingesting the truth and i think that's given that's given me awareness to wisdom versus knowledge it's given me awareness to eternal truth truth that will never change that would be my what i wanted to speak into the community today is take a look at how much knowledge you're ingesting versus wisdom or truth in the word and i would say move get rid of some of the knowledge stuff <laughs> and uh, start moving more into the word i think it, that would be my general thought and wisdom is um knowledge or truth in action yeah I like that and so if i think that's one of the kind of points where postmoderns have rejected modernism is because modernism in so many ways has been this um, push for this accumulation of knowledge, accumulation of knowledge. And postmoderns have looked and seen, all right, well, it hasn't necessarily done for you what, um, what we want um, it to happen. And I think some of that is because of an accumulation of knowledge rather than a practice of knowledge, rather than an implementation of wisdom. And so what one of the things that I think will be most winsome and most showing the love of Jesus to people is if we as Christians take the truth of Jesus, the truth of Scripture, and we live it out in a way where the truth is seen as being practical, where um, rather than just some accumulation of knowledge or head facts that we believe to be saved, but that that belief actually translates into action 
and that that action um, makes an impact on the world, makes an impact on our society, makes an impact on our families. Oh, that's so good, Dan. You know, I've been, I, I, I saw recently that one of my good buddies, Jacob, is doing a fantastic work about, you know, some of these topics. And, and you know, the world out there sees Christians as hypocrites a lot of times. I mean, that's just the bias that's out there because a a lot of times we as Christians in general have been hypocritical. You know, we're espousing Jesus, Jesus, and then we do crazy stuff. <laughs> so we're easy targets for it. So it's just an awareness to have uh, as a Christian that that's what we're facing out there in the world. That, that that's a, there's a bias out there generally. I realize everybody isn't like that. But generally, it's something to be aware of. And again, don't take it personally. If someone attacks you or uh, I had this like 90 year old lady, give me the finger two days ago in Trader <laughs> Joe's. Yeah, it was crazy. Just because I had my cross on, I made some comment and she just. Mm, mm. He had knocks with him too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's crazy. So it's like, that's what we're going to face. And it's nothing I take personally. It's to your point, Dan, put it into action. We're not the ones that do the transformation. God will do that. So, yeah. So be strong in Jesus. Be courageous and bold. I know all those things are in the Bible. Courageous and bold and strong in the faith. And, you know, my verse of the year is anyone who lives, anyone who lives in him must live like Jesus. So that's it. You know, it's like you got to do it. You just have to live like Jesus. All right. Anybody else have things popping up that they want to share? No, let's wrap this baby up. All right. Let's wrap it up. Thank you so much. Robert Bolden, Life Transform. This is We Wednesday. We will be back here again on Instagram next week at about the same time. You know, message us, comment, whatever you're supposed to do on Instagram, do it to get a hold of us. And uh, we've got an amazing community. Check out our community. We've got some, we've got a group of people that are for you, don't judge you, are in harmony with you. And the more you engage with us, it is that environment that Alana talked about. What we're letting into our soul is, is you know, if you want to be hanging around people that are breathing good stuff into your soul, that's what we are all about. So, till next week, have a great rest of your day. Take care. God bless.